Hey, I am apparently, I believe, live on the uh, Tilla the Stockbroker Introduces Facebook page right now. Uh, uh, according to this, I have zero viewers, but uh, so it's I'm unclear whether it's really true that I'm live yet, but I should be able to see comments. Uh, oh, can't post comments on Facebook. Oh, no, okay, I have a backup plan for that. I'm going to uh, look at the Facebook page where I am apparently live right now. Where am I? Am I live on this Facebook page? Let's see, on this message group. I've never performed on a, on a Facebook page before. So I'm just trying to figure out how, how this is... Uh, uh, okay, let's see. Am I there? I I don't know where I am here. Oh, the live video hasn't started. It says... Okay, so... What does this mean? Where am I broadcasting right now? I... Oh, okay. Somebody's looking at me, though. Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay, I'm there, then. Okay, that looks like I'm... It looks like I'm there. And, and Facebook user? Is that you, Attila? that they're calling Facebook user uh, that, that it, I think you come across as Facebook user according to my on my uh, great okay uh, oh yeah excellent oh, well mm. I'm uh, here in my living room in uh, Portland Oregon and um, just uh, for putting things into context I'm I'm uh, playing on the Facebook group page of Attila the Stockbroker Introduces, which is something Attila, my old friend John Bain, started up uh, some time ago during the pandemic, um, where guest performers uh, do guest performances. And I'm honored to be a guest performer on the page, and uh, and I'm especially excited to be playing exclusively on this page that has 6,000 Attila fans uh, following it. And because uh, um, my favorite people to play for historically in the world have been Attila the Stockbroker fans. Uh, we have done many, many tours together, um, mostly all over England, but also all over other places as well, all over the U.S. and Denmark and Scotland and all kinds of places. And, uh, and it's just, um, I had so many good times playing for Attila's audiences. And, um, if we were at an actual gig right now, Attila would be saying, oh, sounds great, you know, as soon as you start tuning. I forgot to tune. <clears throat> so I have two requests from Attila, so that makes it easy to start. Um, but if anybody has any other requests or comments or anything, um, preferably something that would provoke uh, some kind of embarrassing Attila the Stockbroker on tour story. Just give me my... Okay, but, um, I mean, this is... It's not really embarrassing at all, but given that John's capacity for embarrassment is famously <laughs> uh, very hard to you know, a threshold difficult to ascertain. But um, when uh, my uh, one of my most vivid Attila the Stockbroker memories, I just have to randomly recount here on Attila's, uh, 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 Attila the Stockbroker introduces Facebook group, um, which I need, we need a, we need a, um, a nickname for this. It's too much, doesn't roll off the tongue. Uh, but it, anyway, so we were playing, me and John were playing at the Red Shed in Wakefield, a wonderful little venue, which is literally, as it sounds, a Red Shed, and uh, a place that you can speak of fondly because it, it's a place full of wonderful folks. 
and great gigs uh, and good times. Um, but you can never like brag like I played at the Red Shed because you know it's a capacity like twenty five venue, so it's it's a kind of a built in humility. But anyway, we were playing at Red Shed in Wakefield, <clears throat> and um, and and John had a gig at the uh, the Bearded Theory Festival, which I'm sure many people uh, watching uh, have heard of or and been to. I have not yet, but I, I really want to go, and I grow a good beard with very little provocation too, so I, that's no problem. I don't need a fake one. But um, John had just been coming back from the Bearded Theory Festival to join me at the Red Shed in Wakefield, and um, he was uh, um, unusually um, late. With, you know, he's usually very timely and early. You know, like a very professional musician. Uh, but this time he was late, and I can't remember if we, we did we have cell phones back then, or I don't know if we did we knew why he was late, or the, I don't think it, we knew all the details. But he was late for the gig, and when he showed up, he was completely covered head to toe in mud. And um, and as you may have recall, some of you perhaps uh, a tornado, uh, you know, in the age of climate change, and a tornado hit the festival. And, uh, and and broke the stage and somebody broke his hand and, and Attila got off with a whole bunch of mud. No time to wash off before coming to the shed. So I'm broadcasting on a platform uh, called StreamYard, which allows me to control how I sound to some extent but but it comes but everybody who's commenting comes across to me as Facebook user so sorry I don't know who you are commenting but I can see all the comments anyway so um, I'll start with one of the two requests from John and see if there's anything else coming up although it's lovely to see hello from Harlow and Leeds and places I miss very much <laughs> along with just about everywhere else in the world that I haven't been able to go to for the past year my name is John Riley. I'll have your ear only a while. I left my dear home in Ireland. It was death, starvation, or exile. When I got to America, it was my duty to go. Enter the army and slog across Texas to join in the war against Mexico. It was there in the pueblos and hillsides that I saw the mistake I had made. Part of a conquering army with the morals of a bayonet blade. So in the midst of these poor dying Catholics, screaming children, the burning stench of it all, myself and 200 Irishmen decided to rise to the call. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We marched neath the green flag of St. Patrick, emblazed with Erin Goldrod. Bright with the harp and the shamrock, and the tad padre publica. Just fifty years after Wolf Tone, Five thousand miles away, the Yanks called us a legion of strangers, and they can talk as they may. But from Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. Major battles. Churubusco was the last. 
Overwhelmed by the cannons from Boston, we fell after each mortar blast. Most of us died on that hillside, in the service of the Mexican state. So far from our occupied homeland, we were heroes and victims of fate. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. I'm just looking at comments here. Uh, oh, now, now I see Attila. Now they're saying names of people who are posting. Attila, Sam, Sam Dracy. Hey, Sam. Um, uh, but other people come off as Facebook users. I'm just always experimenting. Uh, Steve Wozniak said, those who design digital platforms should be forced to live with them. But, of course, the rest of us, too. But they uh, always, uh, yeah, lovely to see you guys out there. And this would be, of course, it would be that song that if we'd be playing a gig together, um, there'd invariably be people in the crowd who'd be saying, uh, um, uh, oh, uh, Attila plays violin, um, because he would have been playing the violin on that. Quite likely. And um, <coughs> let's see. We have another... Another Attila request, which ma it makes it easy to remember what to do. It's in a different tuning, though, so then y'all have to listen to me tune some more. Oh, good, we have another request. I can do that. Have a new album coming out and actually in the next few days it should be up on Bandcamp. i'm not sure exactly sometime it's very soon very soon uh, paul mcadam in ireland is doing the finishing touches on mixing and mastering right now and um and it will be called uh, rebel songs uh and uh, it's all just songs i've written in the past year I could do a couple of them perhaps Uh, this is the other song that uh, I heard from somebody. Uh, it was just when I first downloaded the Signal app, which is now much more common than it had been a few years ago. And uh, somebody uh, said, download Signal. Somebody wants to message you. So I downloaded Signal, and then I started a, a fascinating uh, conversation with uh, someone in Syria. Listen to me, friends, from New York to California. Consider for a moment Sulaimania. The last city volunteers would often see before. They hiked over the mountains and joined the war. For the freedom of the people of Rojava. The enclave defended by RPGs and guns wielded by Rojava's daughters and sons along with scores of those who've come from far and near who learned to fire mortars so they could fight right here for the freedom of the people of Rojava What makes a person go from Occupy Wall Street to marching through the desert with blisters on their feet to risk life and liberty to face Islamic State knowing that martyrdom would likely be their fate for the freedom of the people of Rojava Something worth defending 
isn't hard to find. Not many will go off and leave their homes behind to go train on the mountain with the YPG to go join somebody's struggle out of solidarity for the freedom of the people of Rojava. The blood of many folk has been spilled along the way, including several radicals from the USA. So remember Robert Groth and Michael Israel, how Todd Jordan McTaggart, how they lived and how they fell. For the freedom of the people of Rojava. For the freedom of the people of Rojava. For the freedom of the people of Rojava. And somebody in the thread there on Facebook there mentioned Behind the Barricades, which is a very appropriate song to request at this particular juncture, actually, because... Uh, <clears throat> When I heard from the guy in Syria, he was telling me that just a few days before he texted me, they had sung this song <coughs> at a uh, gathering of fighters. Before his comrade died. <clears throat> when the world has gone crazy and it's all becoming clear when they're gunning down our comrades and it seems the end is near as they're loading up the launchers for the tear gas grenades we can take off our bandanas and kiss behind the barricades when it's madness all around and you can see this at a glance we will sing and we will cry we will laugh and we will dance as they shout their marching orders beneath the helicopter blades we shall seize the moment for a kiss behind the barricades they will try to break our spirit and at times they may succeed but our love for the world is stronger than their greed when the building is surrounded and hope begins to fade in my final hour a kiss behind the barricades as the movement grows there will be hills and bends but at the center of the struggle are your lovers and your friends and the more we hold each other up the less we can be swayed here's to love and solidarity and a kiss behind the barricades. That I know, some, Attila says, some of the finest songwriters watching. I totally am getting that impression. And this is um, uh, one of the things about you hosting this thing, Attila, on your Facebook page is uh, the likelihood that uh, that sort of thing would happen. And uh, it's a fascinating phenomenon on the internet at least um if we can't all hang out uh we can hang out on online and then hang out in far more international uh uh you know uh, combinations than usual you know at the same time i'm sick of being at home and only performing i mean actually i hardly ever perform but when i do it's on online of course and um and, uh, you know, I miss playing for people. But uh, there's, of course, light at the end of the tunnel for those of us watching, at least in the countries, <laughs> the 10 countries that are getting vaccinated at a rapid pace, such as UK and US. <laughs> My parents both got vaccinated. Sister's getting vaccinated because she's a healthcare worker. Oh. Unfortunately, the vaccine did not come soon enough for Ann Feeney, who just died of COVID-19, and for my uh, for the grandfather and family in Connecticut, where all the kids are, Ed Volpentesta, who just died of COVID-19, Dr. Ed Volpentesta two very 
deaths in the family. Let's see, what key do I do this song in? I can't believe it. You know, when we toured, I always knew these things. But uh, now I forget everything. It's not amnesia. Yeah, she was. Anne Feeney was a great songwriter. And a great singer at picket lines. And many other fine aspects. I wrote a song about her, too. But here's a song I was just thinking of randomly skipping around. The news isn't getting any brighter. The death toll. No, it's not. It's not as it's going. No, no, no. no I don't remember. See, I've been listening to this song because we recorded it, you know, with the band. Um, but, uh, but, uh, I don't actually remember how to play it. But the song I just wrote about Anfini, I wrote a few days ago. So if I don't remember how to play that, that would be sad. Although it's entirely possible, but... Oh, the pirate song. There's a good idea. There's one I'll remember. But that, of course, that's okay. Oh, that request, that, that supersedes anything else. Especially if there's any chance there's a small child. If there's a child watching. If you have not seen the video, there's a YouTube animation on this song that will make you happy for at least two and a half minutes. I went outside one time and a man was standing there. He had a great big beard and lots and lots of hair. He said, won't you come down to the shore and join my jolly crew? We'll wander around the world beneath the skies of blue. We'll sail upon the seven seas, travel near and far. We'll take from the rich and give to the poor and say har 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 har. We'll go out on the ocean and when the coast is clear, we'll eat birthday cake each day of the year. We'll land on a little island, then we'll form a choir, blow on whistles and kazoos and dance around a fire. We'll sail upon the seven seas, travel near and far. Take from the rich and give to the poor and say har 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 har. If we see the Navy, we will shout with pride. We are scary hairy pirates, so you better run and hide. We'll stamp our feet up on the floor and our peg legs too. We'll take your stolen treasure, cause that's what pirates do. We'll sail upon the seven seas, travel near and far. Take from the rich and give to the poor and say har 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 We'll sail upon the seven seas, travel near and far Take from the rich and give to the poor and say har 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 Oh good, we're getting uh, requests I might know Let's see, I... I think I should be able to do that because I did it. I do it often. When I do, I do monthly uh, concerts on my Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube pages at 9 p.m. British time uh, on the last Saturday of every month. And, um, and this is a song that I actually have done recently on my monthly concerts. Uh, and that video that Attila posted, uh, I guess it was today morning your time, middle of the night my time, uh, 
from the dock, the port there in uh, Shoreham. Or or uh, not? Are you in Shore, Shoreham by Sea? Is that where that picture that said Shoreham by Sea? But I guess you're you're actually in Southwick. But I don't know where that if that, that picture was Shoreham. But that's uh, it's so nice to see. Oh, and that was a beautiful poem. And then just before that, uh, John posted something on Facebook, a wonderful rant uh, in in favor of the NHS. That has been shared like more than a hundred times. I think it spoke to people. It certainly spoke to me. If I were there, I'd be proud of the NHS. And I'd be giving shit to all the Tories who cut it down over the decades. And new labor. That bucket of sick. If new labor is a bucket of sick, then what are the Tories? Which container fills that uh, vomit? What container, whoever answers the question correctly, gets a prize? Other than Attila, you can't answer. It has to be somebody else. 1831, the age of industry begun. For the working folk of Wales, life was short. With wages cut again, it was only sensible that then folks took over, shut down the debtor's court. The gentry pulled the wire, told their men to open fire and restore the rule of their estate. But as the night descended and the battle ended, the soldiers had all fled behind a gate. They chanted cheese and bread and our children must be fed, fed. In the days when Wales rose against the crown, they chanted cheese and bread with a bloody loaf above their heads. When the red flag flew in Merthyr Town, the message went out east and west to put the gentry to the test. The cavalry was ambushed and turned back. After so long playing defense, the time had come now when the workers were the ones on the attack. They chanted cheese and bread, and our children must be fed. In the days when Wales rose against the crown, they chanted cheese and bread with a bloody loaf above their heads. When the red flag flew in Merthyr Town. and soldiers by the score till order was restored. Then came Dick Pendarin's execution. Another martyr for the cause, meant to give us pause. The next time people call for revolution, they chanted cheese and bread, and our children must be fed. In the days when Wales rose against the crown, they chanted cheese and bread with a bloody loaf above their heads. When the red flag flew in Merthyr Town. Oh, I fucked that solo up really bad, but that's um that's uh that's the song anyway. A Cheddar Gorge Cheddar Gorge well Attila already gave it away, it's a swimming pool. I knew that. But um, a swimming pool full of stick. Now, okay, I should do something more recent, but it has to be a song that I'll that I'll remember. Perhaps would be a good one to do. I don't know. It's always uh, one of those ideas. Here, we'll do this. <laughs>
Jacob Blake was walking to his SUV. Alton Sterling was selling DVDs. Eric Garner had just broken up a fight. Brianna Taylor was asleep in the middle of the night. Tamir Rice was playing in the park. Elijah McLean was out walking after dark. Dominique Clayton was sleeping in her bed where she was shot by a cop in the back of her head. Say their names. Say their names. Say their names. Say their names. Walter Scott was driving to a store. Betty Jones was answering her door. Philando Castile was driving home with his girlfriend. Anthony Hill was naked on the grass when he met his end. Edsel Ford was walking in his neighborhood. Michael Brown was blown away just standing where he stood. Kendra James was shot to death at a traffic stop by yet another unaccountable killer cop. Say their names. Say their names. Say their names. Say their names. Atiana Jefferson was playing a video game with her little nephew. Gunned down just the same. Oscar Grant was celebrating the new year. Handcuffed when the shots rang out that everyone could hear. Eric Reason pulled into a parking spot. Not long after that was when he was shot. George Floyd was just shopping in a store. Micah Xavier Johnson thought he was still at war. Say their names. 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 That song will be on the upcoming album. And, uh, oh, here's one album I definitely remember because it only has three chords. And it's one of the best. The best songs usually have three chords. Which Attila the stockbroker knows very well. <laughs> As do most of the songwriters. Watching. I'm just guessing. If Rob Johnson is watching, then 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 it's then that whole theory's blown out of the water, because he plays way more than three chords. <laughs> One of the things um, that have been uh, very disturbing, which is I'm sure. Uh, you know, it's international, so it must be happening over there, too, because you guys have Facebook. And, um, you know, are these people who go to the who get hospitalized with um, with uh, COVID-19 and, you know, up to the point that they're being ventilated, they don't believe that the virus exists. And, you know, this is a thing, right? And uh, it's very, very alarming. But very much like a lot of other things, you know. We do, this species. But uh, the efforts of the liberal elite to convince uh, the masses to believe them uh, about uh, you know, the virus is they're just kind of weak, you know, because they're, the liberal elite have, there's a lot of reasons we don't believe them, you know. <laughs> they lied about the wars, took time to figure out Time to figure out that democracy and freedom was not what it was about. They said we'd fight the terrorists, but all that I could see was I was occupying someone else's country. They lied about the weapons. They were all so convinced the generals on the TV haven't heard from them since. They say it was an accident, but I think it was their plan. They spread the lie on CNN, NPR, and C-SPAN. They 
lied about the jobs. All the pundits used to say before this city was abandoned and the good ones went away. Sign up for this free trade bill, win-win all around. Now half the gays I used to know are six feet underground. Lying is all they seem to do looking at us on TV. They pretend they care, but it's all about the money. Which anyone can tell, if you have half a brain, why I should believe them now, it just seems insane. Talk turned to the virus, what we all stood to lose. I was not the only one who thought it was fake news. I just went about my life like I normally would do. So maybe I'll catch a cold, I thought, or a little flu. They lie about so much, I wish it were not true But from this hospital bed, if I could just click undo I guess I would have worn a mask Stayed home to quarantine instead of being intubated Hooked up to this machine, you can say that I'm an idiot Maybe, I don't know But before I take my leave, before I have to go Before they stick me in a box with quarters on my eyes There's lots of blame to go around here and I know where it lies they lied about the wars. That's, they lied. Yeah. So, until it says Rob has 32 chords on his average. Well, Leon Rothelson has 32 chords. Rob, only nine, I'd say. Let's see. Okay, well, we're, um... I'm still open to requests, if it's not a song I've forgotten. But I would be remiss not to do something about landlords. Now, I want to say something that might be funny. I hope it's funny, but it's also deadly, deadly serious. And it's for all you British viewers. And I think most of you, probably all of you already know this. Drum ball. But <clears throat> this next song is about a billionaire. And um and if um <clears throat> if Jeremy Corbyn had written this song, they would call him an anti Semite. But it would not be true. And Attila the Stockbroker uh, notes that um, if people want to donate to the Community Cafe, which is giving away meals on a basis of whoever needs them, um, <clears throat> they it's 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 the Adur A D U R Adur Community Cafe Spring Campaign, and if you if you do a search for that, you'll find it. But it's crowdfunder.co.uk and then Adur Community Cafe Spring Campaign with hyphens in between each word. If you want to type in the URL, probably. Just searching for it will work better. If you remember, Adur, A-D-U-R, Adur Community Cafe Spring Campaign. <clears throat> so, oh, and Attila just um, requested a song, which will be my closing song for the set, but I'll, I'll do this one first. Another song for my upcoming album, which has drums and bass and all sorts of cool stuff on it, incidentally. Oh, Adur, a, a, a Adur. A a door, a door. What, what does it mean? Does it mean something? A door. I'll look it up. Sounds like it means something somewhere. <clears throat> to all the Jared Kushners of the world, and all the money that you own, you who look at us with such indifference, sitting. 
upon your throne from which you collect all the rent from your subjects in all the most gentrified towns regardless of whether a global pandemic have forced us to shut everything down to all the jared kushners of the world for whom the ceiling is the sky for you life comes so easy inherited from birth why would you ever ask why do you think you earned it all it's up to you how much you charge it's all yours to keep would you climb any mountain of corpses no matter how slippery no matter how steep to all the jared kushners of the world is your appetite ever met at what point do you ever wonder just how fucked you can make things get before it's bad enough that even you and your investors can see the whole thing's gonna fall just how top heavy can an icon be before it can't stand up at all to all the jared kushners of the world how do you expect things will transpire when all your filings are enforced and the moratorium expires do you envision a neat row of u-haul trucks tenants all packed up to leave their homes your businesses their neighborhoods their cemeteries where they used to go to grieve to all the jared kushners of the world and all your ill-begotten gains you who sit comfortably in your limousines ignoring all the blood stains have you seen this movie before was it good what's your favorite scene minds when they take off the blindfold and the king meets his guillotine to all the jared kushners of the world and i will do this um, song <clears throat> which every day I wake up at some point before the day's over I'm glad all over again that I wrote this song Because if there somehow were to be some kind of a competition between uh, communists and anarchists and social democrats in terms about who is more sectarian in their outlook politically, I really have no idea who would win but it would be a it would be a very tight race and i was very glad though when i wrote the song uh, originally a long time ago that most of my friends turned out to have a sense of humor and i only alienated about 11 of them and they were not needed those 11 I don't drive a car because they run on gas, but if I did, it'd run on biomass. I ride a bike or sometimes a skateboard, so fuck off all you drivers and your yuppie hordes sitting all day in the traffic queues. I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't eat meat. I just live on moldy chives or the donuts that I found in last week's dumpster dives. Look, you people in that restaurant, I think you are so sad when you could have been eating bagels like the ones that I just had. I think it is a shame all the bourgeois things you do. I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't wear leather and I like my clothes in black and I made a really cool hammock from a moldy coffee sack. I like to hop on freight trains. I think that is so cool. It's so much funner doing this than being stuck in school. I can't believe you're wearing those brand new shiny shoes. I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't have sex and there will be no sequel because heterosexual relationships are inherently unequal. I'll just keep on moshing to anti-flag and crash until there are no differences in gender, race, or class. 
All you brainwashed breeders, you just haven't got a clue. I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't believe in leaders, I think consensus is the key. I don't believe in stupid notions like representative democracy. Whether or not it works, I know it is the case that only direct action can save the human race. So when I see you in your voting booths, then I know it's true. I'm a better anarchist than you. I am not a pacifist, I like throwing bricks And when the cops have caught me and I've taken a few licks I always feel lucky if I get a bloody nose Because I feel so militant and everybody knows By the time the riot is all through I'm a better anarchist than you I'm a better anarchist than you And... This will conclude, I think, my uh, set for the Attila the Stockbroker Introduces Facebook group. It has been a great pleasure playing for all of you. And um, I'm going to stick around and see if anybody has anything they want to say. I mean, the applause and the hearts are lovely. But if you have any comments or questions or things to say that might provoke something, anything for me to say for the last minute here. I'll just stick around because why not? And um, yeah, if you want to i got a new album coming out in the next few days and you can find it at davidrovix.com where you can also find out about you know, downloading lots of music for free and supporting me on Patreon if you want. And uh, got a podcast. This this performance will go up in podcast form as well if you want to and I do a lot of interviews with people, usually two or three days a week. I'm interviewing people for an hour, and you can uh, find the interviews and concerts and songs and various other things. They, I put them up in this podcast. And if you look for This Week with David Rovix on any podcasting platform, you can find the podcast or just go to davidrovix.com. And I'm not sure if that link that Till's sharing is quite right, but paypal.me slash David Rovix if you want to make a one-off donation, and patreon.com slash David Rovix if you'd like to become an ongoing supporter and get all kinds of cool stuff, uh, digital stuff that I'll send you, which you, I'll send you regardless whether you're a supporter or not. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. And... Um, I hope to see you around online and uh, especially to see you in um, England sometime uh, in the not-too-distant future, post-vaccine and all that. And um, I was I was, I was, was originally starting out thinking I was going to talk more about Attila. I wanted to come up with more things to talk about Attila instead of singing songs, but then people kept on requesting songs, and I guess that's the idea. Yeah, but I know Attila quite well, and I'd, I'd like to talk more about Attila, um, and I haven't embarrassed him, I think, in this whole thing. In, I, I, but next time, I'll try again. I'll try harder. Okay, everybody, um, bye. <laughs> that's a weird note to end on. It's not my purpose to embarrass Attila. I, mean, I like Attila very much, but I was hoping to come up with something better than the Red Shed story, but well, anyway. Okay. Um, I'll just awkwardly sign off now and um, have a good evening at you there on the other side of the Atlantic and have a good uh, rest of the day, you folks on uh, this side of the Atlantic and you people in Australia, good morning. Bye. <laughs>